Okay, we are live and we are waiting for a one more commissioner to log on for quorum. So shall we wait to start the meeting? <coughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. I think we should probably. Okay. There we go. Just, uh, We're good. Okay. I will uh, convene the meeting then. Okay, so um, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is July 21st, 2022, and this is the 9 a.m. special meeting of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission. We have uh, one item of regular business today. Um, we'll start with a roll call. Commissioner Bertrand? Present. Commissioner Sandy Brown? Here. Commissioner Randy Johnson? Here. Commissioner Alternate Hearst? Here. Commission Alternate Ship Friend? Here. Uh, Commissioner Friend? No one's here. Uh, Commissioner Kristen Brown? Present. And Commissioner uh, Brotkin? Here. Okay, you have a quorum. Sandy, are you frozen there? Looks like she is. She's holding her position really well, though. <laughs> yeah. We'll just hold on. I'm sure she'll be um, able to restore her connection in a few minutes. She'll realize, yeah. We could start oral communication, I suppose. Um, Hi everyone. Uh, my apologies. I no, uh, it happens. <laughs> lost my connection. It was working just fine until just now. Um, okay, so uh, we. It sounds like we did a roll call, and right. we will now move on to oral communications. Um, oral communications is a time for members of the public to address the commission on items items that are not on our agenda this morning. But we still need Sandy to pick people, I think. The vice chair, I don't know who's the vice chair to take over. Our vice chair is not present today. So, Steve, how should we? So, the, the commission can select uh, a person to serve as vice chair, or actually, for purposes of oral communications, Ms. Sandy, you can simply identify the speakers that are have their hands raised and, and bring them in to speak. Okay. All right, so we will go ahead and start with Mr. Brian uh, Peoples. Go ahead, Brian. Let me, uh, there may be something happening here. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, Mr. People. There you go. I thank you. Appreciate it, hey, everybody. This is Brian from Trail Now. The photo you see, Congressman Panetta along the coastal trail, um, North Coast Trail, and behind him is the farmland that will be destroyed with the rail and trail plan. Um, at the last RTC, Mr. Andy Schiffner made a false statement that farmland was not going to be destroyed for the rail and trail. Uh, RTC plans for a rail and trail system to Davenport that will destroy major farmland requiring major infrastructure will shut down farming during construction. It's a major issue. Andy participated in the discussions with the farmers during the uh, forced buy-in. Um, Andy actually um, said that taxpayers are going to fund basically a train to Davenport through tourist train um, supporting supporting a private tourist train with tax dollars is wrong spending millions for a private train is wrong the third district office should not support a private tourist train over the farmers and taxpayers, rather than wasting our tax dollars on expensive trail to accommodate a tourist train in the future. Let's do the restrooms first, the parking lots and, and rail bank, pull the rails and build an interim trail. Please support the farmers um, and the farmers do support 
the trail. And I did talk to the farmers and they concur with this. And we we're gonna have Congressman Panetta go back out in the coming weeks to months to visit with the farmers. And his district now is going to be after he wins, <laughs> knock on wood, pretty confident of that, that section of the corridor. So appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Peoples. Um, I am back, that your chair is back. So I'll call on our next speaker and you will have two minutes. Um, that would be Michael Saint. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Chair Brown. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Michael Saint with Campaign for Sustainable Transportation. Uh, just wanted to not miss the oral communications opportunity uh, to emphasize the need to move people and not cars in Santa Cruz County. Uh, I did borrow that expression from um, Supervisor McPherson. Uh, if you have been watching the news or reading the newspaper, you couldn't miss the seriousness of the toll climate change is having on our planet. The United Kingdom has been said it is melting. Europe is having devastating fires and heat. President Biden is considering calling for a climate emergency in the US. 120 million citizens in the US are under severe heat warnings. What is the biggest contributor to the swarming of our planet? It is greenhouse gas emissions from our transportation sector. If any of you commissioners believe that climate change is the biggest single existential threat to our survival on the planet, then please step up and help your constituents mitigate this horrible effects of climate change. How can you do this? By approaching transportation projects that effectively reduce our dependency on automobiles. This does not go back on your promise to getting Santa Cruz moving forward as stated in the 2016 Measure D advertising. Starting two trans mass transit corridors is the answer to our issues. BRT dedicated on Highway 1 and some type of Coast Futura rail project from Seascape Resort to the boardwalk. These two projects will not only get Santa Cruz moving, they will improve over time versus the ox lanes that we all know will fail over time. We are at the crossroads and the public has spoken. Measure D failed and the tier one HOV EIR has been set aside. Let us catch up with the 21st century technology of electrified mass transit and move people, not cars. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Saint. Our next speaker is Rick Longinati. Welcome. Thank you. Hi. Um, so I wanted to talk about my organization's uh, lawsuit. Um, so our understanding of the recent court decision is that it under oh, it overturns the approval of the HOV lane project, but allows the tier two projects to go forward. The tier two projects are the auxiliary lanes. And we haven't decided whether to appeal this decision. We've got 60 days. Um, and it partly depends on what you all decide to do. It seems to me that you've got a couple of options. Uh, one is you could abandon the HOV lane project. And I wanna remind you that the Unifor Unified Corridor study said it, uh, that project won't be funded until after 2035. Uh, but my read of the direction that California is going is that it's moving away from highway expansion funding. So I don't believe after 2035, there'll be any money for expanding the highway. So option two would be, you know, to continue to spend money trying to fix the EIR on the highway up HOV project. And if you do decide to recirculate the EIR, it's gonna to need to comply with new CEQA guidelines that went into effect in, in 2020. And that's a requirement to measure vehicle miles traveled and to mitigate VMT. Uh, and that's a tall order. And I don't, you know, there's not a whole lot of money around to, to do a mitigation project. So uh, I think that's an uphill battle. And I, of course, prefer if you chose option one. Um, I think we all need to admit that the HOV lane project is unlikely to ever be built. And then we can put our financial resources behind transit. Um, I hope to have more than three minutes uh, if you would grant me at, at, at a next meeting so we can talk in more detail about more organization suggestions. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Longinati. And um, I would just ask, uh, yes, if you contact the chair, that would be me in advance to arrange for extra time. Uh, I'm willing to, to do that. So just shoot me a message. Uh, our next speaker is Barry Scott. You're so kind. Uh, thank you for, for permitting some uh, public comment. I just want to echo uh, what Rick and Mike have said and add one few seconds of a uh, conversation I had in a, in a Zoom meeting, a uh, public Zoom meeting with uh, Congressman Panetta when I asked him, uh, you know, about helping us with, with rail funding, and I hope this works, this is what he said. Uh, Congressman, thank you. Now, now what, hand it off to, to Rod Deer, Don, and, and let me and let me let me ask you because I know the answer to this question. When we defeat Measure D and this RTC begins to move forward with a rail plan, I know you're going to help help us all the heck, right? Bring those those federal monies here. And that's exactly it. And I appreciate you saying that. Um, and that basically that is our job as a federal representative to make sure that the funding is there for the infrastructure that the locals have decided on. Uh, and so that 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 vote is, is a big vote, obviously, coming up here. Uh, but obviously, I look forward to playing my part if I'm so honored to be in this position there to make sure that those infrastructure dollars, those federal funding dollars are there. But look, it starts with you. It starts with people like like Rod Deardon, who who understands how important it is to ensure that we have the infrastructure that allows us to live and work here in this area. So, um, you know, knowing that there's someone like Rod on the call, I'm, I'm humbled uh, to be a part of this call because of everything that he's done for our community. And, and obviously being on this call, he's going to be he's continuing to be involved. And so uh, it's my... So that's about it. And thank you for indulging me and enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Okay, I don't see any additional hands up for oral communications. So we will move on now. Could I ask uh, staff to respond to the erroneous statements made by this first speaker about Thank segment you. five on the North Coast? Thank you, Commissioner Schiffer, and I sort of was in and out for that portion. So yes, uh, uh, Director Preston, if you have any um, comments that you'd like to share in response <laughs> to that, it'd be very helpful. Sure. Um, the the um, North Coast EIR did identify a very small amount of agricultural land that would be taken out of commission. Um, Grace Blakesley um, of our staff who worked on that document is also here and can comment on it. Um, a lot of um, the farmland that is affected is farmland that's encroaching on RTC right away. And we are working very closely with um, state parks on a land swap. Um, uh, to ensure that um, agricultural farming can uh, continue on the North Coast to the greatest uh, extent uh, possible, which is almost exactly what's happening right now. Um, and uh, we have settled with the farmers um, um, and their concerns have been addressed as part of a legal settlement and we are following the terms of that settlement. And Grace, do you have anything else you wanna add? No, I think that covers it, but happy to answer any follow-up questions if needed. Thank you. Uh, Co Commissioner Rotkin. I'll just add briefly, the representation that we're tearing out, I forget the exact word that was used, massive amounts of agricultural land. The picture itself points out, we're talking about a little strip next to the railroad track that already right now, most of which already doesn't have anything growing on it right now. And that the biggest irony is the double wide trail proposed by Mr. Peoples would have taken the same piece of land, even if you had put half the trail on top of the track. So. I don't get it. Uh, I, it's a completely ridiculous uh, accusation against Mr. Schiffer. Thank you. Chair Brown, uh, yes. I'm sorry to interrupt. We do have Commissioner uh, McPherson on the on the line. It's the phone number and the attendees. We are unable to promote him, but okay. I did um, unmute him. So um, you know, if you need to call on him, he is unmuted. Okay, great. And um, Commissioner McPherson, if 
you would like to speak, you could you I think you know how to raise your hand. I'll keep it on attendees so I can see that and um, or just speak up. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have, uh, let's see, I guess we'll move on now. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? We have one item. We on just had agenda. a replacement agenda, but it was just the call in number. Call in numbers, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, we'll move on to our regular business item. That is item four, uh, findings for virtual and hybrid meetings under Assembly Bill 361. Do we have a staff report? Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, commissioners. As as you are aware, due to the um, uh, COVID pandemic, uh, it's been allowed for government agencies to hold meetings uh, virtually, uh, so that the uh, business of government can can continue. Uh, and that was allowed initially through the executive order, governor, and then through the passage of AB 361. And AB 361 requires that government agencies make public findings to be able to continue those uh, uh, virtual meetings or also even uh, high meetings. Uh, and the commission has been making those public findings on a regular basis to be able to continue uh, your meetings. Um, but the AB 361 uh, requires that those public findings be made every 30 days. So the special meeting is being held to um, uh, meet that requirement. So we don't, if, if you meet, um, more than 30 more than 30 days apart and you have to have a special meeting specifically to make those public findings and that's what this meeting is, is doing and so staff does recommend that the RTC make the public findings as uh, outlined in uh, the staff report thank you deputy director Mendez uh, I will now take it out to the public for comment on this item and I see one hand raised, that is Brian Trail now. And this is regarding yeah. AB yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. This is Brian Peoples with Trail now. I've been involved with this organization for over 20 years. Actually, for the last decade, I've been per actually participating in these, these meetings, actually physically going down to the public meetings prior to the pandemic. When the pandemic hit, uh, there was a huge benefit to the community and myself, of course, because now we can do the virtual. I'm actually in Vermont for the summer where I spend my summers. Um, you know, virtually 200 people, I think, have been able to participate. You've seen a huge increase. Um, and as a transportation committee, this is a great benefit and continue to do this. The interesting thing about um, what this pandemic has shown us is these environmental conditions um, create real opportunities and, and force us to the future and to understand the direction public agencies need to go. Great example is sea level rising. Sea level rising is going to force us, as we're seeing with, um, with making commitments to infrastructure and the Coastal Commission uh, requirements. In San Diego, for example, they're spending millions to reroute the train, the Amtrak train, planning for taking it off the coast and then bringing it inland. Um, our own Santa Cruz Coastal Corridor is like 20 feet from the beach from over in Manresa, and we're seeing it fall into the ocean. So any idea of our community investing millions for a fixed rail system um, for that corridor really doesn't make sense when you look at the environmental impacts that are impacting our community, our world. And so I think it's important to understand the facts that we need to rail bank, pull the rails, and begin to use that coastal corridor now as an active transportation resource. Thank you for your time. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Peoples. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Uh, just a point of order. Um, I think keeping people on track in terms of what their public comment should be uh, with respect to the issue at hand is probably the best way to go. I don't know. The, the last speaker diverged uh, uh, just a little bit too much for my liking. You're here. Yeah, I, I um, well, I agree, and um, I try to um, give people a little bit of flexibility there, <laughs> um, but I, I do agree. So um, just uh, we don't have any more speakers for today, but uh, I will. 
uh, make sure to do general reminders about that and uh, monitor when we have uh, multiple speakers. Uh, but this with that, recommendation. I will, oh, I will ask, come back to the commission. Okay, we have a, I think it was a race, but I think I heard Commissioner Schifrin first, um, and I saw Commissioner Rockin's hand second, so I'll go with a motion and a second. Just a um, question of staff comment. before the vote. Yes. Uh, the, um, when we move to hybrid meeting, which is going to happen in August, I believe, <clears throat> um, do we still need to have these um uh, monthly uh, approvals of uh, findings about uh, uh, virtual meetings, or at that point, are we free just to have, have both uh, in public and, and virtual meetings? Uh, so, question to Steve, you, I think. You will likely need to have them because the AB 361 allows for the remote participation without making the remote locations be uh, publicly available. Um, if you follow just the normal Brown Act teleconference provisions and the remote locations have to be places at which the public can also participate and attend. And so AB 361 allows you to do a hybrid without, um, without having the remote locations be ones that are publicly available. I, I wonder if um, without us taking action, I don't want to open a big discussion on this, our, our staff might consider contacting our legislators to get a change in the state law so that that just it becomes ridic ridiculous at some point if every month, you know, when you're, whenever you don't happen to have a meeting that's 30 days you know, closer to the next meeting, you're, you're stuck with these extra meetings that people have to come to. And I'm more concerned about the staff time than ours, but uh, maybe our, our uh, staff could contact our legislators and ask them if we might get some action to get that law changed. So yeah, thank you, Commissioner Rockin. We have talked about this at the commission and I believe um, that staff had been in conversation and I see Director Preston, your hand is up. So um, perhaps you have more info for us. Yes, um, Mike, you are unique, but you're not so unique in being frustrated by having to have these <laughs> special meetings. Um, the discussion is being had at the state level. Um, there is several pieces of legislation floating around to try to um, provide a permanent fix. Um, there, there's um, different versions, different likes and dislikes about the different versions and what they're trying to accomplish. So I'll continue to keep the commission posted. Um, for now, we will need to continue to make these findings if our meetings are more than 30 days apart. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing no additional hands up, I believe we are ready for a roll call vote. We have a motion and a second to um, make the necessary findings for virtual and hybrid meetings. Um, can we take a roll call? Commissioner Bertrand? I agree. Commissioner Sammy Brown? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Alternate Hurst? Aye. Commission Alternate Hernandez? Yes. Commission Alternate Schifrin? Yes. Commissioner McPherson? Yes. Commissioner Kristen Brown? Aye. Commissioner Parker? Yes. And Commissioner Rockin? Aye. That passes unanimously. Okay. Um, then we will um, we'll adjourn this meeting. The next meeting of the Santa Cruz County Regional Transportation Commission is scheduled for Thursday, August 4th at 9 a.m. I anticipate we'll have a robust agenda. And so I look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, until then, um, enjoy your, your summer. 24 minutes, pretty good. And the meeting's <laughs> adjourned. Thanks for keeping us moving. Thank you, yes, take care. <laughs>